again in my video. Boom! Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land! Oh, Come just on. kidding. Blasphemer! Oh, Hello, my. Boring Review Nation! <laughs> Welcome back to Boring Land, Nick here. <laughs> Game. And it is Cricket Tuesday, and we have a special Cricket Tuesday for you today. We are not going for something that has a lot of views, which is not always our only motivation, but it definitely helps us to choose from all the millions of cricket videos out there. Right. We are looking at learning more about cricket. Um, we need to learn more about it so that we can better understand it. So we are looking at the science of the sport of cricket. This is part one of six. This was a recommendation by, a request by Mafian. And he says, I recommend you both watch this video, get a basic knowledge about cricket. So that's what we're doing. Thanks for the request, Mafian. You know, we have a couple of friends, um, a couple of family members that are subscribed to the channel as well. And I mean, <laughs> when we, we talked about this a long time ago. The first I mean, all we really knew about cricket was what we heard from the Ninja Turtle movie. He was like, cricket? Nobody understands cricket. And in America, we just it's one of those sports that's not big. So a lot of people that watch the channel is like, man, some of my son's friends are like, man, those guys take, take some nasty balls off the face. I wonder if it hurts as much as a baseball. And again, I don't have that knowledge. I know you guys are telling me that the ball is harder than a baseball. But even Americans are not, that, that follow our channel now are like, oh, you know what? We still don't understand the game. So watching highlights is cool, but you really got to fully understand the game so that you can see how the game is played, the nuances of the game. So we thought that this would be a good video to start with. Yeah, I mean, we gotta, we've got we've got to learn more about it. We've done a few reactions to the basic understanding of cricket, and that got us with the beginning part. Hopefully, this is called the science of it. Hopefully, it'll give us even more information. But without further ado, before we get into this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the Patreon. Thanks to all of our patrons. We appreciate all the love and all the support. Let's go ahead and jump into this. At the heart of the game of cricket is a duel between a batsman and a bowler. A fast bowler can send the ball at fantastic speeds. The ball reaches the batsman in half a second. At times, it travels too fast for the human brain to react to. The ball seems to defy the laws of physics. During this battle, there is only room for one general, the captain. He's the man who must manipulate minds in this match. In this program, we'll discover why the ball swings, how science can help fast bowlers bowl faster, how to make a bat for a world-class player, and what it takes to be a world-class player. To outsiders, cricket can seem a strange and alien world. The players wear white. The ball plays tricks on the mind. It's a game of mysterious skills and a language of its own. Googly, Yorker, Cutter, Golden Duck. It can last for days. It demands the stamina of an athlete, the flexibility of a gymnast, the strength of a javelin thrower, and the mind of a chess grandmaster. But at its heart, it is a battle between a batsman and a bowler. True cricket fans know the game's many rules, but here's a beginner's guide. There are two teams of 11. The bowler bowls to the batsman. He tries to score runs by sprinting from where he bats to the second wicket, where the bowler bowled from. To get the batsman out, fielders try to catch the ball or throw the ball at the wickets to knock them over. Depending on the competition, the game can last between one and five days. Although the rules were invented 300 years ago, it's science that is now helping shape the modern game.
These men are the undisputed masters of cricket, the Australian national team. Their greatest spin bowler, Shane Warne. He's taken nearly 500 wickets. Their best one-day batsman, Michael Bevan, dominates the game. The Australians have cricketing stars. Brett Lee, one of the youngest and most lethal fast bowlers. The world's most successful captain, Steve Waugh, who scored nearly 10,000 runs. The Australians are supremely fit. They're mentally tough. They use science to stay world beaters. Because they're the best, players from all over the world come to Australia to learn from their success. The English invented cricket, but the national team is underachieving. These young cricketers from the English National Academy have turned to their old enemy, Australia, for help. Rod Marsh, Australia's best ex-wicketkeeper, has been given the job of transforming this new generation of cricketers into men who can beat the Australians. I mean, his rhythm, well, he has not a rhythm, because he, I don't think he's ever practised well on two balls the same. No. Because these young cricketers are England's future hope, they're given the best that science can offer. At the elite Australian Institute of Sport, they have the best scientific advice available from their physiologist, fitness instructor and psychologist. The first thing the AIS demands is peak physical fitness. The squad have a gruelling fitness schedule. Their physiologist, Richard Smith, has some tough advice for them. We're looking for all-round athleticism, um, so it's not specific necessary conditioning. They need to be good athletes, and increasingly, certainly in one-day cricket, athleticism is, is, is a key marker of performance. To raise their game, there will have to be sacrifices. These guys will get used to the fact that they can't afford to drink if they're going to train uh, properly uh, with the training workloads we give them, because they simply won't be able to do the job at training. One or two beers isn't going to hurt them, or one or two glasses of wine. But you know, I mean, it's gone to the days, you know, like my time, for example, where when I mean, you basically drank and ate what you wanted. Things are different now. They're professionals, and uh, the game has changed in that area. The English are not the only team to ask Australia for help. The under-19 Bangladeshis are training here too. They too are being whipped into shape to give them explosive power, strength, speed, and endurance. But the Australians know that today's cricketers must also work on their mental fitness to survive in the modern game. Above all, international cricket is all in the mind. Mentally, it's very difficult to separate batsmen, bowlers, wicketkeepers. I mean, mentally, you know, you have to be able to focus on, on what you're doing. You have to be able to, not only during a match, but at training, um, you have to get your priorities right in the first instance. And I think once you've reached a certain ability, it's your mental approach to the, the game that separates you from the rest of the players. In the science of cricket, we'll see just how big a role psychology plays in this battle between batsman and bowler. A bowler can crush a batsman by bowling at bone-breaking speed. In part two, we'll look at the science behind this confrontation and explain how a bowler uses physics and aerodynamics to break the batsman. Fast bowlers, pacemen. These are the players who open the bowling. Launching balls at batsmen at speeds of up to 90 miles, that's 144 kilometers per hour, in the hope of getting them out or turning them into nervous wrecks. That's beautifully bold. Pakistan legend Wasim Akram bowls out Graham Hick in the England-Pakistan Test Series in 1992. Oh, look at that. The perfect in-swinging Yorker. His bowling partner, Waka Yunus, continues to torment the English. In-swinging Yorker again. He's got him. And that's out. Another wicket falls and uh, 
England are really in trouble now. According to the Bangladeshi's coach, Troy Cooley, fast bowlers have to have something special. Okay, so that, that ended abruptly. But um, obviously it's a six-part series. It looks like an, like an old television program, right. documentary type thing it's on ESPN or something. I don't feel like there was a whole lot of new stuff that I learned in there. Right. Um, the psychology aspect and the, the fitness, you know, I didn't really think about it, but it makes complete sense. Um, but the training I thought was really interesting and how they're going to, at that time when this cr was created, the best of the best, supposedly the Australians. I'm not sure how true that is. And Bangladesh is sending their under-19 team to go there and train, which is genius because if they have something to offer, that's going to be the next generation of their national team. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, and I think <laughs> anybody who's been an athlete at any level of competition, whether it's high school, sports, college sports, pro, semi-pro, you understand that you don't have to just train the body, you have to train the mind, okay? Uh, uh, in football, which, you know, my son plays high school football right now, you see these guys, you know, practice six days a week, five days a week for one game, and they know that at that game, you know, there's going to be points where they're exhaust, exhausted and they just need to be able to take over. Boxing, same thing. You're hitting those heavy bags and speed bags round after round after round, minute after minute, because you just need instant to take over. And that's what they mean, I'm assuming, by training the mind so that you want to be at peak physical condi condition, but then it's also a battle against yourself, against your will. You know what I mean? And that's a that's an interesting part of it. Plus, like you said, you know, it's a battle between the uh, a batsman and the bowler it's got to take a lot to, to, to prep yourself to stand in there, stand in knowing there, yeah. that, man, when these guys, like you said, they're throwing at you and you, you could be a nervous wreck. You, the, 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 the ball's like so, so lethal. It's like, man, do I want to stay in here? Is this going to come in and hit me? You know, it, it's definitely got to be tough. I did notice, though, unlike our baseball, the uh, cricket ball has just the one seam. It's got many stitches over it. So... It's funny when they throw it, at least when they were showing the spin, it's with the seams, where in baseball you kind of want to hold on to the seams, and that's where you get your... Mo that your the, the loop. The yeah, you're going to hold the horseshoe, you're going to throw a curveball. If you're throwing a four-seam fastball, you're going to go across the stream so they can go this way, and it kind of almost rises. If you're throwing a two-seamer, you're on the other sides of the seam with your fingers split. So I, that's the video I'm interested in watching. I guess it's going to be the next yes, one. Because I want to see how they grip the ball, how they throw it. Um, I mentioned I'm going to buy a cricket ball. I want to see how my son uh, 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 does with it. And, you know, just go and mess around, see how what the difference is. And somebody was like, uh, you may want to be careful because uh, yeah, those that. balls are lethal. And I appreciate that comment. Trust me, I haven't caught him, like I said, since he was like 14. <laughs> the kid's 16 now. This kid throws rocks. So I'm definitely not with a cricket ball or a baseball. I'm standing behind there. I'll probably just have him throw at a pad in the uh, workout facility at the high school. They do work out with heavy, uh, heavier balls, you know what I mean, just to warm up their arms. So he's not used to throwing with a heavier ball any which way. But I just want to see if he can get any kind of movement on that ball, how hard it would be to get movement on that ball. Because you do see some of these balls act just like – Sliders, you know what I mean? They're just darting in on on on, on, play, on hitters or batters, I should say. So you know that, that looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, you know I'm uh I'm interested to learn more about the pitching as well. I uh, there was someone that made a comment that said something to the effect of how you can't just throw it like you normally would. It's it's illegal. You have to have that that funky. I would call it funk because I'm not used to it movement and the mechanics. I'm curious to see if they dive into that and the mechanics of how you hop and then throw and what angle and whatnot. That would be really interesting. I don't know how you train your body to be able to do that. Um, but learning about it is is going to be helpful for us so that when we're watching stuff and we're seeing like with those swing or the spin bowling um, or the, face, the pace and swing, when we're seeing something that looks interesting, we're not realizing how you know miraculous it really is because that's the best of the best because right. we don't really know what's going on. So thanks for the suggestion. I don't anticipate this video is going to get a lot of clicks because it's not as exciting to right, do right. this, but we're doing our due diligence. We hope you enjoy it. If you mm -hmm. do, don't forget to like and subscribe. We were also interested to learn about the rules because right now there's a huge baseball scandal going on in the United States. I'm not sure how if it's made it worldwide, but I mean, it's nationwide now where even 
people in other sports, basketball players are talking about this baseball scandal where people were stealing signs. And I mean, in baseball, it's such a huge thing. So I was just wondering, I mean, all sports have those shade of gray areas. Like what's shade of gray in cricket? You know what I mean? Like I mentioned, can you throw out a batter intentionally? How many times can you throw out a common ways you know, to cheat or maybe things that people have done in the past that has been banned now? Let us know about those cheating methods. Yeah, those things are always interesting. And you've never heard of a title getting stripped. It's so big. They're talking about stripping the World Series from 2017 because of what the Astros did. You know what I mean? Which is it, crazy. It ain't going to happen anytime soon. It may <laughs> happen, but I don't see it happen. It's never happened before. But we appreciate, as always, the love. We appreciate um, you know, subscri subscribers we have. I still can't really let it sink in that we have 10,000 subscribers. That's just Super cool. unbelievable. But we I really told my students the other day, man, you guys don't want to hear me talk. You know what I mean? I got a uh, a ton of people that want to talk. You guys got to wake up in my class. They're still falling asleep on me. I'm like, come on, guys. You know may not saying? be as interesting. <laughs> but we appreciate it. And until next time. Six runs.